больше ничего. After months of preparation and hope, the heads of state went to Paris for the great meeting. Mr. Khrushchev, on whom so much depended, had not refused to come because of the U-2 incident. We hoped that reason had prevailed. President Eisenhower, his term of office now nearing its end, came nevertheless with all the authority of the United States. Mankind knows that the effects of nuclear war would be not only horrible, but universal. Mankind expects the participants in this summit meeting to work honestly and intelligently for measures toward genuine peace. And Britain's Prime Minister. Everyone knew it was largely due to Mr. Macmillan's patient and persevering work that the summit had been reached. There are compelling reasons why we should not fail. Today, mankind cannot afford misunderstanding suspicion, hostility, errors of judgment based on ignorance or anger could lead with dreadful speed to the extinction of civilization. The Elysee Palace was the meeting place of the Big Four. It was here that the proceedings opened with a virtual ultimatum by Mr. Khrushchev, who demanded a public apology for the spy plane affair. Had he merely come to say this? President Eisenhower pointed out that Mr. Khrushchev was clearly determined to wreck the conference. In the face of insult, he remained calm. For Mr. Macmillan also, the situation was very bitter. It must have seemed that all his work had gone for nothing. Was all to be done again if the jagged summit was to be reascended? The world was facing a very grave crisis. which is, in other words, the destination. Uh, Focus on a press conference and booing among the clapping for Mr. Khrushchev. <laughs> he was accompanied by Mr. Gromyko and Marshal Malinovsky, the very grim Soviet defense minister. Addressing an audience of two or three thousand journalists in Paris, Mr. Khrushchev denounced the Boers as imperialist lackeys, riff-raff, and other choice names. His tirade lasted for over two hours. It seemed that instead of negotiations to ease tension, he preferred the icy hazards of an intensified Cold War. When Mr. McMillan flew home, the pouring rain must have added to his depression. But he paused to say a few words for press and newsreels, the words of a real statesman. In spite of the disappointments of the last few days, President Eisenhower, President de Gaulle and I joined on Tuesday night in issuing the declaration which ended with these words. We remain unshaken in our conviction that all outstanding international questions should be settled not by the use or threat of force, but by peaceful means through negotiation. We remain ready to take part in such negotiations at any suitable time in the future.